If you take a look around your room right now, you're gonna find yourself some black cardstock. There's gotta be more you can do with just black cardstock, right? Well, today I'm gonna to show you some different ways you can use your black cardstock. So let's get to it. So the first thing is sentiment strips. I love the look of white on black. So I tend to do this very often with any sentiment stamps that I have. So I work off of some black cardstock and I heat emboss the white sentiment one. So anytime I'm heat embossing, I use an anti-static tool. Um, you can use baby powder filled in a sock or cornstarch filled in a sock if you want, if you don't have a little tool. And uh, this specific sentiment set actually is pretty cool and it has a coordinating die with it, but this will work with any sentiment you have. I just bought this years ago and love it. It's from the 10 stamps and if it's still available, I'll link it below in the description. But again, use what you have. And then I'm gonna use my Misty stamping tool, my stamp positioner for this. But because of how this stamp and die is designed, you don't technically have to use a stamping positioner. If you don't have one. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and ink this up. I've got everything lined up. I use white pigment ink when I'm doing white embossing. It's easier for me to see and I just always do it this way. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and ink the first part. This is actually a two-step sentiment. So part of the sentiment is in print font and the other part of the sentiment is in a scripty font, which makes this quite unique. So then I'll use the second stamp and line it up. There's like a big um, rectangle and squares at the top and you just line those up. And so that's why I said you don't have to use a stamp position if you don't have one. And then I'll go ahead and ink up the second part of the stamp. But again, if you're using just a regular sentiment stamp, then you you're obviously don't have to do all these steps. But uh, I just really think this is quite unique how she mixes the fonts and stuff together. And then it has a coordinating die as well. So before I get to that, let's go ahead and heat emboss this. So when I'm white heat embossing, I always use WOW Super Fine. Super Fine is key, especially with sentiment stamps because you want that super fine powder so it doesn't look all thick and clumpy when you go to heat set it. So that's, I've gone ahead and added the white super fine embossing powder. I poured all the excess back into the jar and now I'm gonna go ahead and heat set this. I don't know why my hand's like that. Like, why is it frozen in that position? Anyway, heat, rule of thumb, anytime you're doing heat embossing is to go ahead and let your heat tool set up for a good 25, 30 seconds, let it warm up and then everything will melt just very quickly. So here's the coordinating die. And so I'm just lining up the two squares at the top and that rectangle in the middle and it just makes for very, very easy placement. She has regular sentiments. I think she has a holiday one. She has a birthday one. Uh, so if it's something that you're interested in, I'll leave a link below to the company. And then I ran that through my die cutting machine and just popping these babies out. And then I'm left with all of these sentiment strips, uh, white on black, which will match any project you do, no matter what colors you're using. These will always match. So sentiment strips, black cardstock, white heat embossing. That's the first thing I do with my black cardstock. Mono printing is another thing you can do. So I'm doing the same technique I just did. I'm using black cardstock. I went ahead and wiped that anti-static tool over the top. This time I'm going to go ahead and ink up. This is just a word stamp set, just whatever, any kind of background, any kind of stamp you want. For this particular example, I just wanted words. I'm inking it up with black ink. You could also ink it up with embossing ink. And then I'll just press that cardstock that I've already treated with anti-static right over the top. And it seems I'm always using trash right out of my garbage. So I pulled that packaging out of my garbage and I'm just pressing through the packaging just to keep my hands from getting dirty. And then when you lift it up, you can see the words transferred quite nicely. So since I use black ink, it's black on black, but I'm using clear embossing powder, super fine again, super fine is key when you're doing words or sentiments. And then I'm gonna go ahead and heat a boss. This gun is already good and heat embossed. I'm sorry, this gun is already good and warmed up so it heat embosses very quickly. So you could use this with any color cardstock and embossing ink and get a monochromatic look, but this video is all about black cardstock. So here you go. Now I've got a cool background to turn into whatever you want it to be. Another thing is metallic embossing powder. So if you look at your embossing powders, you wanna look for the word opaque or the letter O. That stands for opaque, so that's gonna work on all your dark card stocks. So again, I'm gonna do some heat embossing. I'm using an embossing, did you catch that? I'm using an opaque embossing powder. Inking up my stamp with some embossing ink from WOW. And I've already prepped my black cardstock with the anti-static powder. So I'm just going to press my paper onto my stamp. You can do it the other way around. Press your stamp onto your paper, whatever floats your boat. Just transfer the image. This is some copy paper. Now this I don't think I got out of the trash. 
believe it or not, I'm not using trash on that instance. So I can see that it's nice and transferred very well. So if you wanted a monochromatic look, you can just sprinkle on clear embossing powder or black embossing powder and you're good to go. But I'm using this opaque embossing powder from WOW. And because it's opaque, it's going to show through any color that you that you're working with, whether it's black, white, pink, purple, orange, the rainbow, whatever. So opaque is key when you're working on dark cardstock. And I just love the way anything metallic looks against dark cardstock. Now watch this as it melts. And this particular color is very, very, very cool. Metallic, a little bit grungy, and this little splattered background stamp that I'm using, I think it paired well together. And so I just love how this turned out. It's just Perfect, and again, I can use it on a future card. So I'm gonna file that into my backgrounds section of where I file all of my card panels. Okay, embossing paste. Now I've had this paste from Nuvo for many years, back when in Connecticut, so that was three homes ago. I'm almost to the bottom of this pink, but I'm getting in there and I'm just globbing it onto this black cardstock. Just globbing it on just looks completely ugly and ridiculous, but that's okay, the thicker, the better, because I'm actually gonna stamp into this. So I need to have some thickness for the stamp to sit on. So I'm gonna grab that copy of paper I was using. I've got this butterfly stamp already sitting on an acrylic block for myself, and I'm gonna go ahead and stamp it in there. Be sure it, it's gonna be slippery, so use caution when you do that. Just make sure it gives some good pressure. Don't be sliding it all around or you'll use the image. And then once you're done, you're gonna lift it up and you've got that imprint of that beautiful butterfly. But you still have all that paste left over on the stamp, so go ahead and give it a second stamp onto your black cardstock and you get this really cool look once I show you. <laughs> Apparently I'm using a cloth now. I just need to make sure that it all transfers and that's just super cool. Let's do a side-by-side -side look, shall we? So first up, check it out. It's just super cool, super vibrant. See, two totally different cards, but you made them at the same time. And to clean my stamp, I just ran it under warm water immediately after I was done. I did not let the paste harden onto my stamp and my stamp is just as good as new and totally worth it because I think these turned out amazing. Now Skillshare is something I've been using for years. It's an online platform where I feel you can learn, explore, and almost redefine yourself. I was using it for watercoloring, but since then I've taken a class about Procreate because I was really into creating my own surface pattern designs. This is from Kat Colette, she is awesome. So after taking this class, I released a fabric line and textile line on Spoonflower, implementing all I learned from Kat Colette's class. So now I have a successful pattern line on Spoonflower. I also wanted to create my own journals and I know that you can do that on KDP. So I went into Skillshare, typed in how to use KDP, found a class I liked, and I chose this one. And after taking her course, I successfully released my own bullet journal line on Amazon. And these are bullet journals that I sell for five bucks and I've sold thousands of them. Maybe you want to reinvent your goals or maybe a career change. Uh, I just typed in here career and look at all these different classes that popped up that may apply to whatever your goals or needs are. So I encourage you to check it out. I have a coupon code. The first 1000 people to use my link, which is in the description, will receive one month free of Skillshare. It's got everything you could possibly think of. So I definitely encourage you to take advantage, grab that link before it's gone and see Skillshare for yourself. I just had a voice crack. I swear I'm not a pubescent child. Okay, halo or shadowing or vignette, whatever you want to call it, distress oxides are known for working on dark cardstock. So I haven't inked these bad boys up in forever, so it probably could have done with a good, nice re-inking, but I didn't take the time to do it. So for now, I'm just creating almost like a vignette or whatever those photographers say, just a little shading around the edges, and I'm leaving the inside of that black, and that will make a great card panel. Now I'm not turning any of these into cards in this video. These are all just card panels that I am filing into the background section of my work in progress cards area. And then I can easily turn all these backgrounds into cards later. So I did a vignette on the, on the last background. Now I'm just going to do a mask on the inside, like a little circle like a little whatever. So it's almost like a faux window card. And these are distress oxides. So they're meant to show up on dark colored cardstock. So if you have oxides and black cardstock, they're going to be your best friends. They marry very well together. And you can also layer colors on top of each other with oxides too. If you're interested in seeing just a technique video with distress oxides, let me know in the comments below. And the last technique I have for you today using your black cardstock is gouache. Gouache is a form of paint 
but you don't need special paper to use gouache. So I can use my regular black cardstock. It's very opaque, so you're not gonna see through. So I am literally just scribbling on a couple of flowers here. And you rinse your brush that you're using just with water. So the cleanup is easy. I just, you can squirt your little blob of gouache onto a plastic plate or a paper plate or whatever. Use what you have. And uh, I just am very quickly making some leaves. I mean, whatever, flowers, leaves, a little bit of grass, whatever. Just wanted to show you, look how vibrant those colors are uh, against that black cardstock, but it's gotta be gouache. Okay, that's the benefit of gouache. One of I have a gouache video. I did it many years ago, but I'll link it at the end screen and also in the description. Uh, but I just love gouache because you don't need special paper. And I've got all these colors of gouache sitting in a drawer ready to be used. So that's that. I set that aside to dry. And while I had those blobs on my surface, I just took another piece of black cardstock and I'm just like beating my cardstock into it. Like I'm trying to create texture by hitting the cardstock with the edge of my hand. So I'm literally punching my cardstock. But once it dries, it's gonna leave you that really cool texture look. Here's a look at the little flowers I did very quick, whatever. And look at all that texture it left behind. It's like I crinkled it up. Isn't that neat? So gouache on black cardstock. Give it a whirl. So lots of different techniques using black cardstock. You've already got black cardstock. You already have all the supplies you need to do most of these two techniques. So give it a try. If I missed any, share them in the comments below. I read every comment and I might use it in a future video. If I haven't already thought of that technique, I love hearing from you guys. And until my next video, I will see you again very soon. Bye.